good afternoon, everyone. How is everyone? I don't feel very well. Oh, mm -hmm. darling. I what know. What are you feeling? What are you feeling, darling? I don't know. I just feel bleh. Um, I've been okay. sneezing <laughs> and um, um, I don't think I've got a temperature. I don't, I don't know where my thermometer is anyway. I don't often take my temperature, but I just feel, you know, my eyes are heavy. I feel slightly run down. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And the trouble is when you feel like that, you just think the worst, <laughs> don't you? Because of all the, you know, the press and what's going on and you know, they're saying how quickly the virus is being spread and that you just automatically think that, you know, you think, is it or isn't it? And that and there's a big fear factor now and, and anxiety everywhere. I mean, I don't know about you, but I just keep getting these pangs of anxiety and think, no, I've got to be positive. I've got to get over it and, and be positive. But, you know, we're yeah. all suffering from the same thing, aren't we? Yeah. I identify, I, I, I get up every day going, come on, Keep on keeping on. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Crack a smile. And actually, I feel quite anxious a lot of the time and yeah. have to talk myself through because it's the endless powerlessness. We don't know what's happening and we mm -hmm. can't fix it. We're used to, as mothers, as women, fixing things really quickly and sorting things out and being in control. And I feel we're so out of control at the moment. It's horrible. Yes. Mm. yes it is a, a very point. strange time for, for everybody, isn't it? And the only yeah. thing I'll say is we're all in the same boat. Everybody, yeah, absolutely. That's all I keep thinking about is everybody out there is in exactly the same boat as we are, and we've just yeah, got absolutely. to kind of gird our loins. Do, you, do, you, do you not feel well as well, Sherry? Do you get days when you don't feel well? Oh, like no, I know. I've, you know, I have days when I'm very depressed, and and I'm not a mm. depressed person, but yeah. I get very depressed. I get lonely. I get um, sad. I get you know yes. all of those all of those things that yeah you know we all are feeling and mm. I have to kind of make myself you know get dressed get up get out yeah. there go for a walk get some fresh air yes I think that's one of the major get out of your house yes get out of the house and get some fresh air even if it's a little walk just for you on your own it's yeah it's, it's something I, you know I have a cat you know who only lives in the shed outside and I spent the whole of Saturday cleaning out her shed, disinfecting everything, cleaning everything, making it really secure and lovely for her with little beds, lovely, you know, all lovely. And there were some droppings, obviously. Cleaned it all out and went in the next morning. And the doors always open, but I went in to give her some food. Where was she sleeping? Her litter tray. Oh. <laughs> she has heat pads. She has two cosy homes. She slept in her covered litter tray. God help me. It's because I changed it all around, but it's like, Really, I understand her feeling. I feel oh, like I'm speaking. Oh, I know. It's <laughs> orientation, isn't it? I had, a, with... I had a husband that would do that kind of thing. What, sleep not, in a litter tray? Sleep in a litter tray. tray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank goodness for Please. all of us, I'll Honestly, tell you. Sherry, I've heard a Explain. Lot about, I've heard a lot of things about Ken, but never sleeping in the litter tray. <laughs> Go on. What was the real situation? No, I know that. I would do everything possible to make the house wonderful and comfortable and, yeah. you know, and then, you know, I'd come downstairs in the morning and he slept in a chair all night. No. Think, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. But I'm sticking, I'm sticking to the litter tray story because I like that better, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. In fact, one day I came down and he slept in the car all night. No. No. You tell me. Stop you tell me. Me. I don't know. Many, many years oh. ago, I, I had a party and um, I, I, you know, went to bed and the next morning I was putting out all the rubbish and somebody came up to me and went, hello, and I, went, and I screamed. And this particular person had slept in the car because he was too drunk to drive so he, and there was nowhere to stay. So he just got into his car and he'd slept there all night and he saw me in the morning. <laughs> and, what a strange... But why not even say to me, can I not stay? And then, you know, back yeah. Home. Yeah. Oh, they just to sleep in the car. What a strange yeah. thing. Yeah. I know. I know. They're strange creatures, though, aren't they? They are. I had a partner who loved sleeping outside because he loved to watch the stars. <laughs> That's and different. Sit. And yes, and he, but it, I thought that was rather lovely. And he did get me to do that one night, but it got very damp, you know, like it's up at two in the morning. <laughs> and I had to, I in, gave no, in. That, that's too much information, Dee. I don't want to know about <laughs> the yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
please bring in a guest, please. To be continued. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> Late night. <laughs> yes. Well, we've got a wonderful guest today. I'm just thrilled because he's an antiques expert. He is so many things though. We'd be here all night. It's the wonderful Eric Knowles. Oh, hello. Oh, there you oh, are. Hello. Oh, hello. Hi. Then. You've landed in the nest. Welcome. <laughs> I'm here. Hello, how are you? Um, well, I'm, I'm surprised that I am here because um, for the simple reason that I think, do these people really know me? And, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to be sort of self-deprecating or modest, whatever, but, you know, I, I don't know, I go through life thinking, how do you know me? And it sound, does that sound naive or what? Very naive, Eric. <laughs> yeah, Everybody no. knows you. Everybody knows you. My goodness, how could they well, not know you? <laughs> well, the thing, I'll tell you why. Can I just tell you very briefly? Yeah. I have lived a life of mistaken identity. <laughs> uh, no, no, I have, honestly. I mean, it's still Do you happened. work for MI5? Oh, Do you work no, for he... MI5? No, shh, 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 shh. That's all shush, sorry, shush. Sorry, sorry, well, sorry, the, sorry point is, the point is that I, <laughs> yeah, I, um, for years, people used to come up to me and say, do you think we're going to have any more hurricanes in our lifetime? So, <laughs> no, it's just that I had a moustache in those oh, days. Oh, I see, and got you. John Kettley and I, oh, I know John. We know one yeah. another um, because we both embraced apathy apathy for a long time because we both support Burnley football Club, but things are not <laughs> I, just, I was in I was in the supermarket only just before Christmas and I'm wearing me me blue you know mask you know NHS type mask and a chap came up to he said he said it's no no good wearing that mask I recognize you it's no good wearing that disguise he said you're on the TV aren't you and I said, well, I am from time to time. He said, yes. He said, I can't remember what program you're on. I said, well, isn't it obvious? He said, well, I said, I pointed at the mask. He said, casualty. That's what I'm on, casualty. <laughs> said, oh, that's right. That's right. Hey. <laughs> if I can tell you the most, it can get really embarrassing. Um, again, it's always in supermarkets. And, and I've got to go there this afternoon, but it takes on a new meaning at the moment going to the supermarket but anyway getting to the point is before Christmas we're in a queue and um, there's about three trolleys in front of us and uh, the lady on the checkout looked down and waved at me and my wife's my wife's with me she said who's that I said I don't know and we got a bit nearer and she went like this and I mm -hmm. said you do know I said well of course I, I come in we chat to everybody don't we you know and um, and then we get to the checkout and the lady said to me, and I hate this, she said something to me that you all hate. She said, you don't remember me, do you? Oh. <laughs> I hate it when people say that. And so I said, well, I'm sorry. She said, well, listen, in your business, you must meet so many people. And then she oh. went over to the lady on the next checkout and said, this is the doctor that did my hysterectomy. <laughs> You should have seen my That's wife. the best thing I've ever heard. Oh my God! That's so funny. Absolutely gospel. But I mean, <laughs> supermarkets are great, though. But you do meet weird people, and and uh, the same supermarket. I'm so, I, I will not name it. Uh, but the same supermarket I was in a, a couple, couple of years ago, and um, and the, uh, there was a chap um, walking around, and he waved at me, and I thought, yes, all right, you know. And then um, he, he was talking to a few people and um, I walked past and he, he winked at me. And I thought, oh, this is a bit weird. And um, anyway, my wife walks around the corner. I said, don't go down there. There's a really weird chap. He's trying to make contact. And she said, who is he? I said, it's that chap down there. She said, you idiot, that's Anton de Beck. That's who that <laughs> Yes. It all happens in supermarkets to me. Oh, I've got my specs on, haven't I? I don't know. <laughs> Wear these at the moment. Anyway. Well, what people don't know about you, though, Eric, is you're a big Northern Soul fan, and I am too. So tell us about that time. Well, um, I, I was I was doing a bit of DJing, a very amateurish DJing, but I yeah I'd look. I mean, in those days, it, soul music it, it became known and became known as Northern Soul because it, it the, the upbeat stuff carried on up north. Whereas down south it went funky, 
Yeah. Uh, and the upbeat stuff was stuff that you would never ever um, hear on the radio. It was it was underground soul music, really. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, it was it was an interesting time. I'm glad I was there. I didn't do Wigan Casino because I'd moved to London by then. Yes, right. The I did. That's a big one, wasn't it? Was a big one, but I did. Strangely enough, I when I, I my old producer on Antiques Roadshow, um, we before he he I met I met him. I was invited to come down to a brainstorming at um, BBC Bristol about a program they wanted to do called um, I think 20th Century Roadshow. So looking at things from the 20th century. And, um, and in this brainstorm, I said, well, you've got to put music into the equation, you know, because music, you know, became available to everybody. Yeah. So what sort of music were you into? I said, well, you know, as a teenager, I was really into Northern Soul. And he said, uh, oh, did you ever go to the, did you ever go to the torch in, in Tunstall? And I said, yes, I did, actually. I should point out that when you come from Burnley, Tunstall is exotic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, did you see Sam and Dave? I said, yeah, I did see Sam and Dave. Did you see Major Lance? Yes, I did see Major Lance, you know, and, and it turned out that, yeah, we, we were at the same gigs um, all those years ago. Um, wow. But, oh, um, I still hear it. Do you, you probably pick up on it because they use certain things, certain, certain bits of music as on adverts these days. Yeah, don't? I hear it all the time, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I love you. Yes, indeed, I do. By Frank Wilson. Yes, indeed, I do. And um, Donna Lavery. I love Donna Lavery. Um, you don't know where your interest lies. You know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a bit where she goes, "You cannot begin to comprehend." Da 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 da. And, uh, and so <laughs> yeah, it's sort of hypno hypnotic music. And uh, but having said it that, I've, I've really had, I've really got eclectic tastes in music. Um, even back then, I was listening to a lot of Brazilian stuff, Sergio Mendes, Joe Bin, Astrid Gilberto. Um, I was big on, you know, I was still big on, and big on Beethoven and Bach and Baroque and, and Glenn Miller, um, and you name it. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, Bacharach and David, you know, yeah. romantic music. But well, of course, of course. I mean, I, I'm a diehard romantic, right? I don't mind admitting it, you know. I, I, when you listen to Baccarat and David, you know, you've got to remember that wives should always be lovers too. And don't send him off with your hair still in curlers, curlers. You might not see him again. <laughs> but the makeup is more, you're more likely to get a, get a, a <laughs> ax between your foreheads, you know. Um, <laughs> Yeah. No, honestly, Eric, you've, got, you've started me thinking of all of that. It's funny now because now we listen to the radio, we listen to things at, at home, and you're just listening to certain things, aren't you? As opposed, you put the the you know you ask Alexa to play '60s music or '70s music, but what you forget about is all the different stuff that we listen to. Because wasn't it Stax Records that Stax yes. were part of the the record label? That was all Northern Soul as well. A lot of that was Northern Soul, wasn't it? It was. It was. It was bordering because it was Memphis, and the Memphis sound was different, you know, because you got all these different sounds. I mean, um, Otis. I mean, I mean, it's Motown really that got things moving. Yeah. And um, I was once work. I was once working in Detroit, and uh, I remember a very snowy weekend, and the the client. Uh, that I was going to see um, said rang me up at the hotel. He said, uh, "Listen, Eric, um, uh, tonight uh, Laurie and I want to take you to uh, to the theatre to see South Pacific with Robert oh. Gould." And I'm wow. thinking, wow. Oh, "No, I'd rather cut my leg off than go and watch." <laughs> <it."> <laughs> so on Sundays, I used to have to listen to all these show tunes that my dad used to play on uh, the old Dan set, and. And, and, and set. <laughs> it would be a case of, you know, Porgy and Bess, yeah, okay. Um, and what else would there be? Oh, the, yeah, Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on yeah. the Roof. I listened to it so many times. By the age of 12, I was convinced I was Jewish, you know, and what else would I say? I mean, and, and the other one that, that really, oh, I couldn't stand, I could not stand uh, South Pacific. And oh. it, but, but, 
when I went to the theatre and saw the plot, I was completely mesmerised. And it was a wonderful theatre. Um, it's a cinema and everything. I mean, it was just, it had, an, a, over the stage, it had an elephant's head that must have been 20 feet high. Uh, listen, I go off at tangents. I'm terrible. Why, why were you convinced you were Jewish? Um, only because I'd, because I'd, you know, I'd learned so much Yiddish by then. They're oh. like, I was on top, you know. Um, it was just the music, wasn't it? And um, right. eventually, eventually, I did actually because I worked a lot in New York, believe it or believe it or not. And I, um, I, I seemed to, I got adopted by a, a dealer and her husband, the, the Wassermans, and I, I, be, I, I actually became an honorary Jew sort of thing. And I went to the installation of their new Cantor in uh, Park Avenue in the big synagogue. <laughs> And um, yeah, it was uh, Eric. Uh, trust me, uh, trust me. You know, listen. With your humour, Eric, you are Jewish. It's simply that <laughs> you had the necessary operation. Um, <laughs> Just response. that tiny bit, darling, would have made you yeah. Jewish. Have you been watching Mrs. Maisel? Have you seen no. that? No. Oh, well, then you I'm, will. I'm terribly unwatched. No, you must watch it. If you if you if you've been brought up as a Jewish person in the fifties and sixties in New York, you must see the marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Prime. You will absolutely Brilliant. absolutely love it. So so Eric, I want to ask you a, a very. I'm just going to take you off on another tangent. Oh, so do what was, sorry. What was the most surprisingly expensive item you've ever seen on the roadshow? I love all that when people bring their stuff and they say they don't care about the value and they're desperate to find out. <laughs> okay, right. Okay. Well, th this woman wasn't too desperate. Um, I remember it well because it was at Dumfries House. It's it's uh, it's in Ayrshire. Um, so, and it's the house that Prince Charles actually saved from, saved the contents and everything from going to auction, you know. Anyway, get to the point. It'd been raining all day. Um, the crowd had almost dissipated. It got to four o'clock in the afternoon or maybe three. Um, everybody, most of the people on my table, the experts had gone to find a hot drink. You know, people were, they were prepared to drink hot mm. so bad. And so anyway, a lady arrived and um, with her husband swinging a carrier bag. I said, is you still open? And I said, yes, he's well, time. But I was in the loft last night sorting out my son's toys because he's 23 and he's left home and he's not coming back. And I'm thinking, that's what you think, dear. That's what you think. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, she said, well, I, I, I bought this at a car boot. I bought this car boot and, um, and, and she pulled out this glass vase and it was about, if I put my hands together like that, it's about that size, if you will. And I look at it and I instantly recognise it for what it was. And um, it's an exceptionally rare piece of lally class. It's, it's, oh. it's one off. It's, it's, uh, it's called the lost wax process. Or as we say in Burnley, Nelson and Cohn, c'est perdu. Okay, so, um, and I said, right, well, tell me about this. Straight face, don't play poker with me. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, she said, well, she said, uh, well, I was at a car boot and I bought that for a pound. I, in fact, I tell I, I bought the plant in it for a pound and they gave me the <laughs> uh, Look at this thing. And it, it, if I can tell you, it was like, it wasn't, it looked like a big lump of glass, but it was molded with like ferns on, as handles. And, and twine ferns, uh, or fougere, as we say in Berlin, Nelson and Cohn. And, uh, <laughs> and so, I'd like to record this. Oh, what for? I said, well, I had something similar and it would link in with the previous. Oh, okay, okay, I'll do that. So I, I, sit, I sit her down and we go through this business of, uh, you know, we bought it a car boot, blah, 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 blah. And, and I said, uh, uh, well, I've got to tell you that it's worth 25,000 pounds. You're joking. If you if you see a recording, you'll see a chap behind a swaying. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, that's a real Oh my god. Oh my god. Just as a, as an epilogue. Yeah. Without me knowing, they sold it about six months later at a, a London auction house called <laughs> Christie's. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, with premium, it made over £30,000. Wow. Wow. Then, oh. And then, 
Um, I was in um, about five years ago. I was in outside Strasbourg. I was I, I used to take people on architectural trips, like you know Art Nouveau in in uh, Nancy, which is a wonderful. If you've never been to Nancy, it's fantastic. You've got to go. Anyway, um, I went to the into the um, the Lalique Museum, and there, right in front of me, as I walked in, in the cabinet was that very very same. No. Oh no. Amazing. Because wow. Eric, I was going to ask you, with Lalique, and you said Lally, and I was fascinated because you became a porter at Bonhams, and, and then you, you, you become an expert in ceramics like Tiffany and Lalique, which I personally adore. I think they're gorgeous. Did you just get a passion for, the, for this, one, these wonderful, um, you know, Lalique and um, Tiffany? Yeah. Glass work. Yeah, I've, I've, listen, I've got a passionate for. I've got a butterfly brain, Dee. And Dee, before we go any further, I met your dad. Did you? I met, met you. I've got to tell you, this, I was at some some convention in in central London, and but I honestly, I didn't know. I didn't recognise him. But you know, I just said to this this chap, I said, "Who are you?" And he said, uh, "I'm Jerry Anderson." And he <laughs> said to me, "Who are you?" <laughs> it's quite normal. So, um, so we had a bit of a, yeah, we had a, we had a good ten minute conversation. Oh. I just thought I'd tell you, I knew you, I met your dad. Um, and do you know, we're going you know on about that... Lalique and everything. Um, yeah. and Tiffany, well, that's I, that's why I was in New York a lot because I specialise with Tiffany. Uh, I specialise in American mm -hmm. decorative arts, but with Lalique, um, it was uh, way back. All the all the glass dealers used to think, well, it's just pressed glass. It's not worth. It's not it's not worth much. You know until I sold a, a, a lally clock for 85,000 quid. This is a, I was a, I was a porter at Bonhams by then. I became a, an auctioneer and, um, and, and that's, that stood me in good stead being an auctioneer because, you know, crowds don't worry me and hecklers don't worry me. I have two very brief questions. I understand you play different characters in your journey in life. Can you explain to me Crime Watch and what you were doing on that show? Um, I was on it for the right reasons. Let's put it. Just checking. <laughs> Just checking. Um, I, no, I used to that. do with. I used to. Have, I, I was part of the Aladdin's Cave at the end, and they used to give me three, three and a half minutes sometimes to talk about ten objects, you know, um, which I used to set everything up in the afternoon and go through it with a producer because I, I think telly. I'm, I'm sure you do. I think. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, that was a clever, that was a, you know, I just think, I'm a child of television anyway. <laughs> um, and, and let me just say, Dee, Torchy the Battery Boy was one of my favourites. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 thank you. Eric, and do you know the puppets were on the Antique Roadshow as well? <clears throat> Sorry, no, Sing that again, please. Sing that again, uh, please. It, well, well, I'm trying to remember it because it's about 1962, isn't it? So, uh, Torchy, Torchy. Torchy, Torchy, the, the Battery, battery Boy. boy. Toy. <laughs> I love it. I love talking to you girls because we're the same generation. We can talk about things. Yeah. Oh, so, I have one last question. One last question, darling. Yeah. We're mature, obviously. Could you put a value on us? <laughs> Well, um, it's it, it, it. This is a big. This is a big, big question. I mean, I mean, you are you are basically a, a, a garniture, aren't you? There are four of you. You're, you're two pairs, um, and things it, things are always worth an awful lot more when you've got a full set, and you lot are the full set. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to muddy this with tawdry talk of money. No. I know no heaven forbid. I know priceless when I see it. <laughs> you have Whoa, scored so many like points it. in that one moment. I cannot begin to tell you. Will you come back and see us and talk some more, please, another time? Yes, please can do. I just tell you one thing? Yes. If, uh, if, can yeah. I just tell me what I'm doing now? Is that okay? Yeah. I got, I got head. I got headhunted uh, oh. about nearly just just short of two years ago, and I'm now chairman of a company um, called ScottishAntiques.com which just happens to be in Kent. Uh, <laughs> and and I'm, I'm opening an emporium. You'll have to come down in Tombridge. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Please. The corn, corn exchange. I've got the entire ground floor. Uh, and it's going to be, it's not going to be an antique shop. It's going to be um, decorative objects from the 17th century to the present day. Because I know a lot of contemporary glassmakers and a lot of contemporary potters 
And so things don't have to be antique for me to be interested in it. So yes. um, fabulous. Well, thank listen, you so much. Thank across, you. Yeah, lockdown, one more. Yeah, I'd love to. When, come around. When we come out of lockdown, we should come down and do a show from your place. Well, hey, yeah. you are welcome. I, I'm well, welcome. we'll be there. I, we'll see you there, with, darling. I, I will have to have a work with my landlord, who is the Marquis of Abergavenny. Oh. Oh. oh yes. Oh yes. Well, I'll tell, and next time, I'll, next time, I'll tell. Uh, we'll talk about. Yeah, we'll talk about great women that I've known. I know. Are we not going to talk about the lovely Thora Heard, who was my friend? Oh, in lovely and, memory, and we'll I did with Thora. Bravo! I'll talk about <laughs> Pebble, Pebble Mill at one and. Oh, and, and, yeah. and oh, we'll do this, Eric. We'll, we'll Fantastic. Bring, we'll bring you bargain hunt. Uh, we are the Wonder Birds. Would you like to be a Wonder Boy? <laughs> what a boy. Um, well, it's 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 definitely one of them being a Chippendale, isn't it? <laughs> well, you could do that as well. Mix and match, darling. Listen, well, ladies, I, no, I, no, modesty prevents me. Modesty <laughs> okay. prevents me. Thank you so, so much. And we can't wait to have you back in the nest with more stories. You're amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. You are Oh, Thank you, Eric. Eric. I'm so sorry, ladies. I'm hard of hearing. What did you say? You're amazing. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> You're, amazing. <laughs> You're so funny. Bye. See you next time. Bye bye. 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 Oh, oh, bless oh, him. He's so oh, what an interesting guy, though. You'd never yeah. think that he'd done all the, I mean, so much more as well to say. Yeah. yeah. So much more. So, what's happening on Wednesday, Harriet? Ah, oh, well we have our wonderful friend who is going to give us some much needed Wednesday wisdom, Dr. Ranj. Oh, who's lovely. Flying into our nest. Awesome. Also, our beautiful friend with makeup tips and news, Linda Lusadi. Yeah. So we'll see you Wednesday. Oh. See you Wednesday, girls. See you Wednesday. Bye. 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 Bye.